Hello, I'm Mohsen Jamal and you watch Afghan News. Seven civilians, including two children, were killed by roadside bombs in southern Afghanistan. Monday, the Interior Ministry said the attacks took place in Karabakh district in the provincial capital of Ghazni province. On Monday morning, the ministry said the first bomb struck a vehicle in Karabakh and killed all four passengers, including two children, while another bomb in the center of Ghazni city struck a vehicle and killed three civilians, it said, and condemned the bombings. No group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. The United Nations World Food Program announced Monday it will cut food assistance to more than 3 million Afghans in about half the country's 34 provinces because of a shortage of money from donor nations. The UN agency said it had planned to help feed more than 7 million people in Afghanistan this year, but a shortage of donor funds means 3.8 million people will be helped through meals provided at schools and training and work programs. The program said it needed an additional $220 million dollars to continue its work in Afghanistan at the level originally planned. The program will focus a food assistance on helping the neediest Afghans, especially women and children, said Bradley Guerrant, the agency's deputy country director. Fighting across the Pakistani-Afghan Afghanistan border will overshadow talks when the two countries meet along with the United States on Tuesday to map out plans for talks with the Taliban. President Hamid Karzai accused Pakistan on Sunday of firing 470 rockets into eastern Afghanistan over the past three weeks. Pakistan denied the allegations, blaming Afghanistan for giving safe haven to militants on its side of the border, particularly in eastern Kunar province. The talks between U.S. and Weimar Grossman and top diplomats from Afghanistan and Pakistan will be the first since President Barack Obama announced a faster than expected true withdrawal last week. The United States' strategy in Afghanistan will gradually shift in the direction of counterterrorism, which is limited primarily to targeting military leaders, as force levels are reduced, U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates said in an interview. But Gates said the strategy would still remain a combination of both counterinsurgency and counterterrorism, even as the balance begins shifting. President Obama announced last week a plan to reduce U.S. troop levels by 10,000 this year, and another 23,000 by the end of the summer of 2012. Gates said the president had committed to leaving the surge forces in place between 18 and 24 months, adding that the strategy and tactics will remain fluid as forces are reduced. The International Criminal Court is due to decide whether to issue arrest warrants for Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi and two of his confidants for crimes against humanity committed against opponents of his regime. A three-judge panel in The Hague, where the court is based, is ex expected to announce its decision at 1 p.m. local time on Monday. Luis Moreno Campo, the ICC's chief prosecutor, submitted a 74-page dossier of evidence to the panel on May 16th, requesting arrest warrants for Gaddafi, his second eldest son, Saif al-Islam, and his intelligence chief, Abdullah Senussi. If the judges approve the petition, it would be only the second time in the court's nine-year history that it has indicated a sitting head of state. The ICC issued an arrest warrant for Sudanese President Umar al-Bashir in 2009. Syrian troops have widened a crackdown on towns near the Lebanese border a day after activists said at least five civilians had been killed during house searches and funerals for anti-government protesters. The military moved into the town of Qusair, located near homes and 15 kilometers from the Lebanese border, on Sunday prompting hundreds to flee Rami Abdel Rahman, the head of the Lebanon. London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said residents of Qusair said that shots had rung out overnight, Rahman said, adding that firing had also been reported from several homes and neighborhoods. Sir Syrian troops were also reported to be securing towns near the northern border with Turkey. Britain and China are expected to announce business deals worth $1.6 billion on Monday, including the reopening of British poultry exports to China and increased pork 
Exports, the government said. The deals will be announced following talks in London between British Prime Minister David Cameron and Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao, who is in the middle of a European tour taking in Hungary, Britain and Germany. Wen's visit is the latest of several recent high-level diplomatic exchanges between Britain and China, including a visit to China by Cameroon last November. Britain wants to double trade with China by 2015 to some $99 billion. Britain also said it planned to raise human rights concerns with Chinese officials. Authorities in Nigeria have said that three separate bomb explosions in the country's northeast have killed at least 25 people and wounded many others. The attack on Sunday targeted outdoor beer gardens in the city of Maiduguri, while authorities have accused the Islamist group Boko Haram of being behind the attacks. The National Emergency Management Agency said it was working with other rescue teams to evacuate the injured but gave no further details. Quashing Boko Haram has now become a major priority for the government as it has replaced attacks on oil infrastructure, the southern Niger Delta, as the main security threat in Africa's most populous nation. Thousands of people marched through cities in Morocco on Sunday over constitutional reforms proposed by King Mohammed after unrest by Arab spring uprisings in the Arab world. Thousands demonstrated in different cities in support of the reforms and thousands staging protests against the yes vote in the July 1 referendum. Critics of the reforms say they do not go far enough to reduce the king's powers and the authority will remain in the hands of an unelected person who will not be subject to any form of accountability. The marches against the monarchs Measures were the latest in a wave of protests in the North African state and came days before a July 1st referendum on the reform plan. And that the United Nations backed trial of the four most senior surviving members of Cambodians murderers Khmer Rouge regime began on Monday, three decades after Eris Year Zero revolution marked one of the darkest chapters of the 20th century. The defendants, infirm and ranging in age between 79 and 85, were among the inner circle of the late Pol Pot, the French educated leader of the Khmer Rouge's ultra moist killing fells revolution. An estimated 1.7 million Cambodians were killed through torture, execution, starvation, and exhaustion. From 1975 to 1979, the four faced charges, including crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide, religious per persecution, homicide, and torture, all are expected to enter a pleas of not guilty. Neon Chia has already called the proceedings a sham. And that's all for now. Thanks for joining us.